Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video focuses on my top five shoes for the 10K distance. So following on from that top four 5K shoes video, first in the series, today we're focusing on the 10K distance, or 6.2 miles, whatever it is that takes your fancy. Before we get started, my friends, please do comment below with your top 10K shoe, which is your chosen clog for a cracking quick 10K. This one's in no particular order. These are just five shoes that I think would work really well at the 10K distance. I've deliberately left out once again the Vaporfly Next Percent, just giving some line light to some other shoes today. So please don't comment and say, why haven't I included the Next Percent? There's a very good reason. Just want to give some more limelight to some of these other shoes that can do a equally good job. First up is the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2. So this Zoom X and React shoe did land in 2019, but I think there's loads of use left in this one yet. Lots of pairs you can still pick up for a really good price. It's certainly one of my favorites between that 6.2 mile and 10 mile distance. Just getting this one back in hand again, just reminds me of so many good training sessions and races that I've used this shoe for. A light shoe, a nimble shoe and one with a great level of cushion and longevity as well. Over the 10K distance, you don't really need a huge level of cushion. And I think the Turbo had it just right in terms of the amount of cushion with the Zoom X and the durability with the React layer. A good compressive feel, but still responsive. Lots of people are upset that the Turbo does seem to be put out to pasture. It's been mothballed, replaced. And I don't think the Tempo Next Percent is the replacement shoe for this. I think there's something else special coming from Nike. You mark my words. With a big highlighter. As I said, you can still pick these up for a really good price if you shop around. Well below the retail, in fact. And I think due to the lower stack height and actually very durable outsole, the Turbo 2 has to make my 10K list. 260 grams. I always thought it was a bit lighter than that. But hey, I'm not moaning. If you're enjoying today's video, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch those new videos. It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like. Second shoe is the A6 Meta Racer. I feel the race flat style profile of this super speedy orange and red, or actually what color is it? Speedster mean it does have to make my list. Find me a runner who wants a heavy slug clog for a race and I'll be very surprised. I wouldn't be as surprised if someone came up and slapped me in the face with a shoe. Oh, that hurt. This shoe again gives some really great ground contact. Grip is certainly unconventional. I've got to say it does look a little bit like the bark on a tree. Save the trees, man. But it certainly works better than attaching a piece of bark to the underside of your foot. I'm glad that Asics kept the price a little bit lower on the Meta Racer, and they certainly look to have made it as nimble as they possibly can. I mean, there's really minimal cushioning in the heel there, and there's some sections of the heel where it's just almost wafer thin. I guess that's so that they can put as much flight foam into the midsole as they can, but keeping the weight down. It's certainly not a carbon copy of the other plated shoes, with only a part plate in the forefoot, which I believe flicks out like a serpent's tongue. If you're only interested in tremendous times on the 10K, then the Meta Racer could be the shoe for you. And I think it's gonna turn out to be a very durable one at that. Don't expect a super plush style Asics upper on this one though. This is more a drag racer than a Volvo. I think one of the classic singles of 2020 will be the Socony Endorphin Speed. Hey you with your bright fluorescent laces. I think this one could do a really great job at the 10K distance. If you're one of those people looking for a more cushion shoe, certainly a tad wider in the toe box here. A little bit more accommodating perhaps if your foot's a little larger. Certainly in comparison to Nike's efforts, this one isn't anywhere near as narrow in the arch. I think this one's quite comparable in terms of weight to the Nike Turbo 2. And with that wonderful P-back spaced midsole material, I really enjoyed this one anywhere between about seven minutes 30 per mile down to about six minutes 30 per mile. Yes, it did lose a little bit of its pop after 50 or 60 miles, but it's still vastly more forgiving underfoot than many a shoe out there. I think if you're running in warmer, drier weather, then you're good to go with this one. But many viewers have contacted me recently to say that the underfoot traction 
did leave a little bit to be desired in wet weather. So just bear that in mind, people. A great 10K race option, but I think this one's versatile enough you could use it for training as well on a more everyday sort of basis, mainly due to that slightly less rigid nylon plate embedded in the midsole. Ah, oh, the sweet smell of garden centers. One of the only shops that will still be open when the lockdown comes back in soon. Good old garden centers, we can't beat them. For the fourth shoe, it's kind of two shoes really. I don't think you can go far wrong with either the Adidas Adi Zero Pro or the SL20. Let's talk Adi Zero Pro first though. I feel the idea of using Light Strike to encase the boost here really does make a big difference in terms of the snap you get with this one. Even in wetter conditions, this one held up really, really well due to that superb outsole. Continental rubber here and quick strike. The upper is basically exactly the same as you get on the Adi Zero Adios Pro. And it's stellar, one of the best uppers of 2020 in my opinion. I think again, if you're looking for something with a little bit more cushion there, you've got enough boost, enough of a stack, but still very nimble and great upper feel. I think people misunderstood the use of the carbon plate in this shoe a little bit. I found it great. People always go on about this pop from the plate. I'm not entirely sure that that's really its purpose here. It just provides enough stability. This one feels ridiculously stable underfoot. Fit-wise with the SL20, it's about as good as it gets. You won't find better in terms of value with this shoe. Again, the lower stack height's probably gonna benefit people that like to feel a bit more underfoot response and feel from the terrain. Again, a shoe that can be used for race purposes and training. I don't see why you can't use this shoe for either of those. I think perhaps if you're topping out at the 10K distance, maybe going a little further, seven, eight miles at the most, the SL20 is a perfect shoe. They really have hit on something great with the SL20. I hope they don't mix it up and change it too much with the second version. So I think both of those shoes really deserve a place in my 10K recommendations. Right, got one shoe left for you. And that last shoe is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. I think this is really geared up superbly for 10K. A brilliant, nimble and very flexible feeling shoe with a real blast of character and a unique take on the New Balance fuel cell material too. For 10K, I've got to be honest, I think the next percent's just overkill really. And the Rebel fits the bill in terms of its low weight and that foot hugging upper material. We've got that TPU plate that's sandwiched between the fuel cell midsole and the outsole material. It does help to provide a little bit of rigidity there for that very soft and springy fuel cell. Not sure this shoe really worked for me over longer distances than 10K. For me, it was always a bit of a racer at the lower distances. Perhaps just a little bit too minimal for me in the upper. I always want a little bit more structure perhaps to the upper for those greater distances. Only real drawback to me here was the outsole just got rather slippery in wet conditions and also that it's not the most versatile of shoes. I don't think I want to run easy miles in this one. It's just not made for that. It can be picked up for quite a decent discount now. So do look out for this one, the Fuel Cell Rebel from New Balance. Okay, that's my six actually. <laughs> six shoes for 10K, the Adidas to uh, there's not an awful lot between them i don't think perhaps if you want to go further perhaps look at the half marathon distance or 10 miles maybe look at the adi zero pro guys let me know what your top 10k shoes are down in the comments movie recommendation today actually it's not just a movie recommendation i've been watching or re-watching all of the Marvel films in chronological order. I think probably the first Captain America film will always be one of my favorites. Steve Rogers, what a legend. They really capture that kind of time period as well, excellently. And you got this superb kind of on-off relationship with him and Peggy. Another real favorite of mine is Ant-Man. How does Paul Rudd do it? He just never seems to age. You see pictures of him all the time and he seems to get younger. What's his secret? Maybe he spends a lot of time in the quantum realm. I really love his crew as well that help him out. The security guys, they're fantastic. And they're long-winded stories. If you've never watched any of the Marvel films, do go and check them out, guys. Lots of great fun. There's some real humour in there as well, some real comedy. Definitely worth a watch. But I recommend Captain America and Ant-Man. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video, guys. I very much appreciate it. If it's your first time here and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch the new videos. It does help the channel out a huge amount as well if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. 
My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.